Welcome to the stud or snotling. 10 incubi go to a tournament. Are they studs or are they scrubs? Let's begin. The Jock Kid. Hello and welcome to another tournament in review here on Scottcast. I'm Scarry, worldwide Drukari expert. Uh, Warhammer 40,000 is a fun game, and I decided to bring 10 Incubi, which is something that I've been talking about for a while, to the Stud or Snotling team event. 26 teams, 8-person teams, kind of like the Champions Cup that happened last weekend, but in uh, Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, Waterloo, Ontario. Let's dive into the list, then we're going to talk about what I think, we're going to go through all five of my games, and then come back to the studio, and I'm going to talk about what I learned. And here we have 2,000 points of Drukhari. Now, I am really loving this style of list. The double Void Raven Bomber is definitely something that I really enjoy and something that catches a lot of people off guard. If you haven't played against planes, um, it's definitely something to brush up on because I like them. It is based off of Sky Splinter Assault, which I really like. And I do have the Warlord Archon. I do have a secondary Archon with the Nightmare Shroud. I have Lilith Hesperax as well as a Beastmaster rounding out my troop choices or character choices. I did spend a little bit of time before the event brushing up on some of the paint schemes. I glued pieces back together. I made sure all of the rims and the bases were painted. I also put tufts on certain things to sort of delineate my squad splits and things like that when I do the squad splits as well. For battle line, I have 10 Witches. 10 Cablite Warriors with all the upgrades. Of course, the big 10 strong Incubi brick with two Raiders, two Venoms as their dedicated transports. Two units of Mandrakes, two Kronos, single Kronos with all the upgrades. And of course, the two units of Scourge, one with four Dark Lances and one with four Haywire Blasters. The two units of five Mandrakes and the two Bombers sort of bring it all together. And there you have it. It's a list that does a lot of damage in both shooting and combat. Has a lot of tricks with Sky Splinter Assault, bouncing in and out of transports, uh, incredible threat ranges. The biggest reason I decided to take the Incubi is to lower some of my bad matchups. The Incubi give me an opportunity to fight some tougher stuff and try and kill things in like a single blow without having to do the death by a thousand cuts style, which is essentially one of my favorite ways of playing the game. So I'm really curious to see how it, they do, right? Like what I can throw them in against, how much damage they do on average with pain tokens, without pain tokens, out of a transport, from not, from like not a transport. So that's like the aim is let's see if they add something to sort of like my tournament winning list. Well, there you have it, 2000 points. I'm really excited to try this. Of course, there's supposed to be some sort of point update soon. So I'm curious to see how this list will change based on that. Also, uh, the Toronto Full Open is going to be happening in about three weeks, and I need to do a display board for the army to make sure that I get as many hobby points as possible, because I'm going to be banking on that best overall or trying to score as high as I can. Um, other than that, let's go to the event and see how this list does. Welcome to the Stud or Snotling. It's a 26-team, eight-person team event. Stutter Scrub, which is my team. We're playing against War Games Warrior White, I think. And uh, we're on row 11. So, wish us luck. Round one, let's go. Round number one, playing against Dark Angels. This is Gladius, 15 Deathwing Knights. Like, just the standard Gladius build for De uh, for Dark Angels on the, the, uh, the Ritual. Very interesting. Dark Angels went first, so I have a second turn, which is good, I think. I did kill the Scouts with my Beast Pack. The Beast Pack is gonna die. However, so far, so good. It's gonna be, I call this about a drawish normally. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's really gonna come down to like turn three, turn four, and uh, whether or not we all kind of do good damage to each other, essentially. So, wish me luck. Let's see what we can do. End of the game. 89 to the Dark Eldar, 81 to the Deathwing Knight, so 11-9. So it was a victory. It was, a, of course, it's ritual, so, you know, it's hard to like, get each other off and with the heavy table the death were actually really high but that bombers as soon as the bombers came in it was like nuke 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 it was just fantastic absolutely wonderful and uh my big unit of incubi i liked it they killed almost four deathwing knights in a single combat phase so okay but then they both died because i didn't i didn't layer the damage with like a wraith like retreat well enough in and in and out in and out but with that Okay, I don't know how the round did, but we'll see how it goes. 
Uh, on to round number two. Round number two, we're playing Purge the Foe and uh, Staggered Hammer and Anvil, playing as Hyper Crypt Necrons. So I ended up going first, bossed a really long charge with my Beast Pack that started over here to kill a unit of Death Marks and tie up one of the Hexmark Destroyers. So this is mission two, playing on another WTC board. I love these pieces of terrain, which like are foldable and stuff, they're really neat. And the footprints are nice, they kind of fit into the footprints nicely. So right now I'm just zoning out, making sure that, you know, the only way to cut back here is with a three inch deep strike. And other than that, it's gonna be a good time. Uh, playing Chimera Gaming, they're a store in Kitchener, Ontario. So make sure you check them out. I'll put a link down in the description. They run tons of events. They even have like tons of magic stuff they do. And uh, and they, they run some good, good Warhammer. So check them out. Okay then, so this whole game or this whole event has been a mission on how do the Incubi do? Well, I will say, in this game against Hypercrypt, the Incubi did awesome. We might draw the round. It was a very tough game round into Chimera. We so it's very like close. We're still figuring out a couple of games. Still going, but the Incubi rapid ingress deep strike moved up, killed all the immortals that were hiding in the building. Then walked over, punched a monolith to death. Then walked over and killed a wounded um, uh, void dragon. Well, I'm gonna say that so far that Incubi unit has got my vote so that's really cool with that though it is the end of round number two one more round uh today and then two more tomorrow exciting times round number three we ended up tying last round against chimera it was very very close round it's an 80 80 tie gonna play against john and his guard he went first he's just rushing me with 18 bulgrin a bunch of chimeras it's gonna be a fun time he's just it's taken hold hold one hold two hold three so he's just rushing to get all this stuff on the objectives. Very, very aggressive play here. So let's see what happens. Take an old search and destroy. I put the uh, Incubi and Deep Strike again. So we'll see if they can do stuff when they come in. I'm curious to see what they can do. Uh, other than that, yeah, wish me luck. And that is game. What a game. Uh, ended up being an 11-9 win for me, but I believe that the rest of the round did not go well. And I think we lost the round. However, great game. There's still two big bricks of Bulgrin, but everything else is dead. Um, awesome, what a fantastic match. And uh, guard still, they still kill stuff dead. Going first with guard is really good. But overall, fantastic match. So now food, sleep, and then another two rounds tomorrow. But so far, that Incubi brick has been fan frickin tastic We'll talk about it when we get to the studio. End of round number four. Ended up playing into Orcs, and it was a mech sort of like detachment with looters and cans and 60 Gretchen and flash gits. It's a very, and like bubble chuckers, really good list with like shock attack gun mechs. It's like a new style of orc list we're seeing in the meta. Um, I did 19 won it though on supply drop. It was a fantastic game. Uh, the orcs had to get up close and I was able to just counter. I had bottom a turn, Lilith Winham. The whole game was streamed Tabletop Live. Uh, so I'll put a link down below. You can go watch it. It's the first game of round of day two. So round four of day two of the Stutter Snotling. We're all having a good time here. So now let's go eat some food. Okay, round number five. Playing as Eldar. Lots of fire prisms. Incarn. Playing Lynchpin. I hate Lynchpin. You know this. I think it's the silliest mission in all of the land. But I went first, which is also bad. But so far, okay. Let's see what happens. Big brick of Wraith Guard. You know, so it's my turn two, which is luck. We did win our last round, so that was pretty good. Last round of the day, it's exciting. End of the game, came down to the wire. Uh, we had the Wraith Guard fall back from a Witch and Lilith and lose three Wraith Guard to Desperate Escape Tests, which meant that they weren't able to nuke her. And then at the end of the game, uh, the Drukhari came out victorious, but it was very, very close. Oh man, it's uh, lots of activations. I didn't really use the 10-man Incubi Brick because that's what this whole event has been about, the 10-man Incubi Brick, except for one thing in this game, which was they charged an Incarn and did 23 wounds to it before saves. I feel they could have almost killed the Incarn from full health, which means I normally try and, like, when the Incarn commits to the board, I can, like, do grenades and tank shock and vicious blades to, like, bring it down to a manageable level. And so I had charged it with multiple things, but I... 
I could have just sent the Incubi in and probably killed it. So just something to keep in mind next time I run into the Incar and I have the big brick of Incubi. But other than that, that is it for our run. And let's go back to the studio and take a look and talk about the list. And we're back at the studio. Let's take a look at the army and let's break it down. And I'm going to tell you all the stuff I learned game to game because I learned quite a lot this this uh, event and I cannot wait to share it with you. And here we have it, the list. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed how this list played. So I played against the uh, Dark Angels. I played against Guard. I played against Eldar. I played against Orc Spam. I played against... Uh, like Ludas and stuff. I played against um, something else as well. And of course, Hypercrypt. There you go. So I did play against uh, five different armies. The Court of the Archon and the Warlord Archon are a mainstay in my list. I really, really like that unit. I tend to sacrifice them turn two, turn three. They end up all dying pretty quickly, which does mean that it's hard for me to score some of the um, secret missions that involve the Warlord. However, they do a lot of damage, their fight first, and the disruption they cause helps the rest of the army do its thing. I will say I missed having another unit of Cabalites, though. Like, having two more units of Cabalites, you know, instead of the Incubi, it just really, really, really changes how much OC and other units I have to, like, deny points and whatnot. I did miss them. So using my Cabalites was a little bit more nuanced and it meant I had less sort of like throwaway units. Lilith Esperax has proven to be over and over again one of the main killers of the list and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. I wouldn't expect, I would expect it to go up in points. Um, so hopefully not too many, but her and five witches are just incredibly, incredibly strong. If you're not using a beast pack and you're playing Drukari, I feel for you because the beast pack takes me out of a bind almost every single game. One of the greatest examples is in the Orc game I played, which was on Tabletop Live. So I put the link to that game in the description. But you can see how I use the Beast Pack to really disrupt the enemy plan early in the game, which then allowed me to gain a foothold in that match. The two Scourge units are still pain token heavy and reliant, but I love having just the two units, so I'm not spending too many pain tokens on them. One Lance unit keeps big stuff in line and not being too aggressive, and one Haywire makes tanks just scared, so they become the main target, which is perfectly fine. I don't mind if my opponent has, like, you know, vision, like, has to try and kill them, you know what I mean? Like, they just see red and have to kill the Haywires or the Lances. That's perfectly fine. You, I'm okay with losing all my Scourge every game. The two Kronos and the two Mandrake units continue to be the units that score me the most points. They just hang around, screen out the backboard, get me containment, sabotage, like all of the weird little things I need to be doing. Just these four units basically do it almost all the time. The transports, two Venoms, good, I like splitting the units. And then the two Raiders. Now they were harder to hide because they're so big. I normally always deploy the Court Raider, but I did Deep Strike to Rapid Ingress the Incubi Raider a few times in the five games. And each time that that happened, it was very impactful. Being able to Rapid Ingress and then fly forward, disembark the unit, and then be able to charge, it just allowed me to really get into places where my opponent just couldn't deal with that unit. Um, and it was just very, very strong. I did enjoy having the no Overwatch uh, Nightmare Shroud. However, I didn't really use it that much this tournament. But when I, I didn't play against Sisters, I didn't play against Tau, you know, so I really wanted to make sure I have it just in case. And last but not least, the Bombers. They are incredible. I absolutely love them. I am afraid they might go up in points because I love them so much. Uh, but they just kill everything. They just shoot and kill stuff and kill all the little things so that my MSU becomes king and my opponent can't hide stuff behind footprints. And they just, I can sometimes rapid ingress them. They can get a four up inval save with the strat of night shield, all that stuff. It just makes them very tough to kill. And all in all, this list is great. So what would I change? Well, right now I'm not gonna change anything. And the reason is we're looking and waiting for sort of like a points update that might be coming up soon. So there's no point in really changing the list too much. I am playing this list in a local league, uh, two local leagues, and I'm thinking of taking this list to the Toronto Fall Open. 
unless the points really change it drastically. In which case, I will show you the new list before I go. I'm also going to be running this list in a couple of battle reports coming up. So make sure that you watch those if you'd like. A huge shout out to the channel Patreons, without whom none of this is possible. Shout out to the Tabletop Forge and to the Stud or Scrub team, which we played. I ended up fifth out of 208 players in terms of score, which was really, really cool. Actually, I didn't expect that. And the team ended up in fifth place out of 26 teams. So the team did great. Three, one, and one was our record. And I'm very, very proud to be a part of a team that's really chill and happy. And we do our best on the Tabletop. Now, on the next video, of course, there'll be another bat rep. And if you like this, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. What sort of unit are you excited about? But the final verdict is in. I think that Incubi unit is definitely a stud. It was incredible. I loved it. And even though it's a little tougher to use, I had to be more careful with my command point usage and whatnot. Um, so... It was hard to use, but I can see the value and I cannot wait to get better at using the big unit so that I can really maximize on this damage. One of the key moments of that was when my Incubi did 23 wounds to the Incarn, right? Like they had to take 23 saves. Normally when I kill an Incarn, I chip away at it, right? A little bit at a time. And then when it has like five or six wounds left, I can charge it with something and it dies or whatever, right? In this case, I feel like I could have just run in the Incubi by themselves and they would have reliably either killed it or just very, very much almost killed it, which would have been fantastic, right? But that means I can use my other tools elsewhere, right? Because I have that big hammer unit. Other than that, let me know what you think down below. A huge shout out to all of you for watching, liking, sharing the videos. Of course, stay tuned for the next one and I'll be doing more Drukari content. After all, I've been Skari, your grateful host, signing off until next time. Skari out. Ah, the Dark Kin. Bye, everybody.